This franchise guide video is sponsored by EA. What's going on everybody, C4, welcome back to the channel, and today I'm going to be showing you how to start everything franchise mode. How I set up my personal franchise modes, some recommendations to set up your franchise modes. We're going to take a look at all things scouting, and we're going to take a look at all things free agency. And free agency is a big one, as there was a massive free agency overhaul here in Madden 23. But first thing is first, let's start with some baby steps. Here's how I set up my franchises. So the first thing that you are tasked to decide with is do you want to play an online franchise or an offline franchise? This is down to 100% personal preference. Sometimes I do an offline franchise, but a lot of times I rock and roll with an online franchise as the biggest trade-off is that it sims a lot faster. And obviously for this example video, we're going to be picking my beloved Philadelphia Eagles. The last stage in setting up your franchise mode is the customization stage. So you can just get right to the point here and hit start playing and get right into your franchise mode. But if you want to modify things just a little bit, here is what you can do. So you can go from being your head coach and you can go into change role and you have an option to control one singular player throughout their career right away in franchise mode. So it's a little bit different than face of the franchise or another big important one is if you want to do any franchise where you relocate your team, you have to be the owner. You can't relocate a team as a head coach, as a player. You have to control and start your franchise as the owner if you have any plans on relocating that franchise. On top of, you just get a little bit more control all around over your team. You also have the option to go for a custom coach and it gives you two starting points. One is staff builder, which gives you a boost in the staff mods talent tree. Or you can go with the team builder coach, which gives you a head start in the player growth talent tree and if you don't know what those are we'll get to it in just a second and the final stage of setting up your franchise mode are the league settings now a lot of these are going to be down to personal preference and your play style i can't decide that but i will show you guys what i usually run for my franchise mode so skill level you go all mad and all pro but this is again whatever level you are at as a player in franchise mode game style sims a little bit more realistic competitive is you want to play with competitive rules and arcade is just completely over the top i like rocking and rolling with sim all these other options, you know, again, we'll just show off what I rock, but it is self-explanatory. Uh, relocation settings. Now, as we talked about, if you did create an owner and you want to relocate, say, the Dallas Cowboys, a team that would never relocate, but you want to do it. If you kind of want to force that through, you can go over here and toggle on everyone can relocate option, and every team is on limits for the relocation process in franchise mode. You have the staff talent cost modifier. So in your skill trees, which I'll show you guys in just a second, if you want to make it a little bit more easier to, to, to fill out and flush out those skill trees. You can make it so it's fast and the upgrades cost less. Or if you want a little bit more of a grind, you can knock it on to slowest. And it'll take you multiple seasons to really fill out any of your coaching trees, be it your head coach, OC, DC, or your GM. The rest of these is all about how you want to rock and roll with your franchise in terms of injuries and cooldowns and, and all stuff like that. Um, your roster protection. This is probably a little bit more something you could vote on in like a multi-user league. Dev trait management. This now comes down to personal preference. I love breakout scenarios. It's one of the most exciting things that can happen in your franchise modes. I am not a big fan of dev trait regression. If you want your franchises to be a little bit unpredictable though, feel free to turn that on. If you want it to be a little bit more predictable, 100% turn dev trait regression off and you can kind of control... So you just don't have anything weird going on, like X-Factors regressing down to a superstar and stuff like that. I, I just think it's a little bit better this way in my personal preference. But if you want the insanity to happen, if you want random things to happen, turn it on. Leave it on and enjoy the chaos. Uh, in terms of clock bench, I love going 12-minute quarters. I feel like when you're playing the game and you want to have like accurate rushing numbers, passing numbers, 12 minutes seems to be the money zone for me. 10 minutes as well, but obviously if you don't have that amount of time to commit, you can go with a little bit slower. Uh, for your user team help, this is all. If you want to be super hands-on, leave them all manual. If you think some of this stuff is too tedious or too much for you or not what you're looking for in a franchise mode, you can just switch it on to auto. The computer will hand it, handle it for you. You have auto progress players and auto progress talents. These are... I like to turn them off. I feel like auto progress players, you don't, you lose the control to make guys scheme fits. You lose control to kind of build and develop players the way you want. Like if you have a quarterback that's not quite a scrambling quarterback, but you really want it to be scrambling, you got to turn this off and target it yourself. Because if not, the computer is just going to keep going with their top archetype. Uh, and then you have progress talents. This is for spending your coach upgrades in your skill trees. Again, I like that off so I can kind of target the the, the meta, the, the cheese, the, the top abilities that are going to benefit me most in franchise mode so you're now in your franchise very quickly 
here are things that you should keep an eye on. First is your weekly strategy. You're going to have this option every single week. It's all going to be different based upon your opponent as you set up your defensive game plan and your offensive game plan. What I want to show you is down here your focus training. So you have, as it starts, three players on your roster that you're going to be able to select to gain extra XP every single week. This is paramount that you guys set this. Sometimes if you just let the, you know, an auto set, it's not going to be your three best players, your three players that you want to get that extra XP. And with your skill trees, you are going to be able to eventually unlock three additional focus player slots to give you six, which is 100% what you want to try to strive for sooner than later so you can maximize your player growth in your franchise mode. The next option on your weekly to-do hub is you can manage your staff. Here is where you can handle your formation subs and your auto subs for your lineup, your scheme. So if you want to straight up revamp your team, go from a 4-3 to a 3-4, or make sure you're using a particular playbook, this is where you're going to be able to modify those. And the last aspect of the manage staff tab is your franchise staff. These are your skill trees. This is where you have your head coach, OC, DC, and your player personnel. Think of that as like your general manager. So as you go through your season, there's going to be different goals that you can achieve. Weekly goals, saying I want to run for 300 yards, total offense, have a huge game. I want to pass for four touchdowns. I want to have three sacks. And you also have season goals, which is like we want to finish with 30 total touchdowns on the year, 2,000 total rushing yards. And every single time you achieve these goals, you get at the very top. See that green F, and there's a five right next to it. Those are staff points. And you can spend them here in these trees. So... I will give you right now my recommendations for how to kind of plan this way. Because sometimes, depending on the difficulty of how you have your staff modifiers, it can be a grind to earn these points and spend these points. So to make sure that you're maximizing, you're not spending them on things you're not going to use, here's how I'd recommend spending them. First thing is first, under head coach in player growth, it is paramount to work your way down. You can go down the left side of the tree, which are upgrades for your... Uh, XP gains on the defensive side of the ball for your defensive players. If you go to the right-hand side of the tree, it is XP upgrades for offensive players. You can only pick one side, so once you commit to a side, you can't go back. But it is very good to go all the way down, upgrade, 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 and get the final piece. I would prioritize getting this. All players on your team will count as scheme fits during training, so you're going to get that additional XP boost, which is, that's the name of the game, is you got to develop your players, get more XP, get higher overall, and get more wins. Another important one, under staff mods. This one here is a little bit different because as you spend, you have to get both sides of the tree. Sometimes when you, like on this tree here, if, say if I started upgrading my defensive side, I, I won't be able to go over here and upgrade my offensive side. I had to make that commitment. But here in staff mods, you actually have to get at least one upgrade on all six of these slots to get this option available, which is after school tutoring. So remember I showed you get three extra players that get bonus XP every single week? Well, you can upgrade this three times to get those additional three slots so you can have six players getting bonus XP every single week. And if you're doing a rebuild, if you want to get those young players up to a higher overall as fast as possible, get all three of these after-school tutoring upgrades. Now you have offensive coordinator. These, well, if you have X-Factors on your offense, absolutely prioritize getting X-Factor on because it gives you the ability to equip your X-Factors. But the most important upgrade, I would say, out of both of these, again, kind of can come down to personal preference, but I think the most value is here on the offensive coordinator. Right now, we already have a coach that's kind of committed to this side. Here's a good example, like where I commit to the right-hand side. It locks out every single upgrade on the left-hand side. But you want to get all the way down here to concentration. It gives boost catching for wide receivers and tight ends plus five. It's the easiest, most impactful player overall stat attribute upgrade, whatever you want to call it, that you can get between OC and DC, in my opinion. So if you are trying to decide, you don't really know if you want to go offense, you don't want to go defense, in my money, this is the best one, the best bang for your buck. So focus on that. And then lastly, you have the player personnel. Here you can work on trades, which are going to be a little bit more valuable in, you know, one-man leagues. Because obviously when you're in multi-man leagues, if the whole league is filled, you know, this is a little bit more so dealing with user-to-AI interactions. Contracts are important, especially with the changes to free agency. Free agency is a little bit more difficult this year, which is great. It's a welcome challenge. So these upgrades here, as you can see, you get increased likelihood for signing O-linemen, all these different increased likelihoods for signing positions in free agency. It's just going to make your life a little bit easier in attracting those top free agents to your team. And I think the most valuable one is feels like home. Scheme fits now have an increased interest in signing through free agency. So if you're building your team the right way and you're trying to bring in guys that fit your coach's scheme, you're going to get rewarded with a little bit extra interest on the old meter there. And like anything that's a tree base that trickles down, the lower you get, 
the better the upgrades are going to be. So in head coach, you can get Fountain of Youth, which slows regression down for one position, which is which is huge, especially for some of your veterans. In particular, once you get to the quarterback spot, you also have, we've seen enough, it reveals a hidden dev trait for one player once a season, which is huge. At the bottom of staff mods, you can reset one talent tree for an OC, DC, or player personnel. It's easy, you know, if you messed it up, you didn't like away the direction you were going, just get a fresh restart. Uh, same goes for player personnel, as you see down here. The last one is important in case if you botch a signing, and especially when it comes to in-season extensions, you can unlock one player in re-signing who is not interested. So if you made your star franchise quarterback, who's an X-Factor and only 25, really upset, try to lowball him, he says he wants to go to free agency, you can, you can kind of get this, like, get out of jail free card, spend it, it's 40, so it costs a lot, the 40 skill points, but it will give you a second chance at negotiating, kind of mend that burn bridge with your star player. So let's talk a little bit about drafting. Week one, you're going to be prompted to choose your draft class. You can keep your auto-generated rookies or someone like myself that makes custom draft classes. You can go download it from the Madden share. It's going to take a little bit. Oh, it's, it's so close to being done. Oh, it's going to be so good. If you want the real college players, look no further. But as it relates to scouting, I'm going to give you a little breakdown on how to hire and assign scouts. So in Madden 23, your scouts are broken into tiers. You're allowed one three-star scout, one two-star scout, and three one-star scouts. And something that is a big difference from Madden 22 to Madden 23 is the expertises of these scouts are a lot more complementary. Like last year, you'd have scouts that were offensive tackle and offensive guards. You'd have scouts that were corners and safeties. You'd have scouts that are linebacker, middle, and outside. You know what I'm saying? This year, it's a lot more complementary. Look, we have defense and offense, quarterback, middle linebacker, safety wide receiver. So that way, you're kind of covering a lot more ground in terms of of the extra bonuses you get from your scouts expertise. And if you want to change scouts, if there are certain positions that you don't really think you need to focus on in the draft, you could fire them very simply by hitting X and you could take a look at all of the free agent scouts. And Lulu Hernandez, my girl's looking pretty good. We're gonna hire her and fill out our staff. A different element to setting up your scouting staffs this year is just straight up, look at the region breakdown during this stage. It gives you the strengths and weaknesses of the entirety of the draft class for all these different regions. And if you really just want to optimize it, you could completely fire your scouting staff and then just, just get a piece of pen and paper. Write down the strengths of every single region and hire scouts that align with those strengths so that you can 100% maximize your scouting throughout that draft class. It's definitely a you know valid strategy. It might not, you know, in line with what your roster's at. It might not in line with the positions that you need to draft, but if you just want to get the most information on the best players in the draft, it's definitely a valid strategy. The next stage in scouting is at week three, you're going to be prompted to set your focus scouting. So for each of your regions, you kind of just pick a position that you want your scout to absolutely prioritize out of them all. And here's a great example. We're in the West region. We got Jimmy Walker. His expertise are quarterbacks and wide receivers and the strength of this region. At least one of them is wide receivers in the West. So for all these different regions, you're going to be able to set this. But in this particular one, try to align it with what your scout is an expert in as it will just maximize the amount of information you get throughout the season on those prospects. And then again, in week eight, you get the exact same process, except this time it's your national focus. So this is for your big dog scout. This is going to give you the most information. So this should be focused on the singular most important position that you are looking for ahead of the draft. So if you need a franchise quarterback, even if the quarterback class is not strong, you pick quarterback here for your national focus and you're going to have a lot of information about the entirety of the quarterback class come draft time. So the final element of scouting is looking at the prospects, using the information that your scouts have been able to provide for you and a nice quality of life improvement here in Madden 23 is on the far right of the player hub. You now get a quick snapshot of the player stats. So as you can see here with Bryce Young, deep, mid, short, throw under pressure, all our A's, you know he's going to be an absolute stud. And as you work your way down, obviously, uh, players are going to have different uh, skill sets that you usually unlock. And if you have less information, you're going to have like someone like Anthony Richardson, where we don't really know exactly what his throw under pressure is. It's going to be a D or an F. So again, it's why you should always try to prioritize position needs so you have as much information to make an informed pick when is your time. There's also other things, other tells that it comes to drafting, Things you can look for at the combine that can, you know, maybe tilt good prospects in your way. That's for a different video. 
But as far as scouting is concerned, this is definitely a good quality life improvement. So you don't have to go in and manually look at every single player and figure out what their stats are going to be. You have it all right there in the prospect hub. So now, lastly, let's take a look at free agency. This is, in my opinion, the biggest addition to franchise mode in Madden 23. So for players new and old, free agency is going to look drastically different. You have all this information on the screen. You might feel a little overwhelmed right away. Don't worry, I'm going to help you navigate the waters and you're going to be dominating your free agency before no time. So we are the Philadelphia Eagles right now and based on whatever team you are, obviously your needs of where you want to try to spend all of your money are going to vary. But the most important thing you should look at always is your interest. Now, if Derwin James, if we're Philadelphia Eagles, we want a safety pretty bad. So Derwin James would be excellent for the Philadelphia Eagles. I want him, he is yellow interest. But say... You know, you want C.J. Gardner-Johnson, you're a Florida Gator homer, and you want to just stock by your team with the Gators. Don't be outright discouraged that he has zero interest in signing with your team. He is a scheme fit, which is important. You have a couple of the motivations there that line up with his interest. But you can always kind of give him more money. Money can solve all problems as it relates to interest meter. But it is always important to pay attention to all these motivations, because that is a big new aspect in franchise mode so someone like derwin james he wants a big market which we can offer in philadelphia if you're in a smaller market you're gonna have to pay a little bit more money to compensate for your lack of meeting his needs there's no income tax which is kind of cool i like that that's a thing uh head coach historic winning record or win percentage is not the best with nick sirian it's a work in progress but for someone like derwin james because we do align with some of those motivations you have options here to hand out any type of contract you want you can give him a custom offer you can go team friendly which as you can see it's um, it's highly unlikely any player that is not, I mean, Derwin James at yellow, you might have a little bit, but you're going to have to get someone, let's see, do we have anyone that's 100% interested in coming to Philadelphia? Like Kaiser White, for example. You could probably give Kaiser White a team-friendly deal and you might have a chance. So I want Derwin James. That's, that's the big fish that we want to try to land. So I'm definitely not going to hit him with a team-friendly deal. You have Mutual, which, you know, middle of the mall. When they're yellow... And really where the, the threshold he is right now with his interest, you might be able to get him on a neutral deal. But to play it safe, I'm going to give him a player-friendly contract. You also can go very player-friendly. This is what you got to break glass in case of emergency. If there's a guy that you absolutely need and he has like zero interest in picking your team, you have to hit him with a very player-friendly contract offer. We'll go player-friendly just because of you know the, the talent level of Derwin James here. I mean, we're Philly. Like, yeah, we want James Robson. Say we're, say we're you know, we going to replace Miles Sanders here. So not a lot of interest here for James Robinson. So we're going to pick a very player friendly. So I'm going to show you that it is still obtainable to get these guys that have zero interest in your team if you hit them with the right offer. So we're going to focus on these three players. You know, it's we're going to have to wait and see on James Robinson. I'm a little bit worried, but I do think we can get Kaiser White and Derwin James. So as you can see on the top, right below all your little tabs, you have active negotiations. So at any given time, you can only have five active negotiations. So Makes you have to be a little bit more strategic. You can't fill all your eggs in one basket on the first stage of free agency. You're going to have to pick. You're going to have to prioritize, which is kind of good. You also have, very important, the evaluation period. So at each stage, you can get three little mini windows within each stage that these players can evaluate, think about their offers, and you might get them to outright sign for your team. So you don't have to just quickly burn through stage one, two, and three to fill out your team. You can do it within each stage, and that is through the evaluation period. So as you can see on the bottom of the screen, clicking left stick will burn one of the evaluate periods. And all players here have evaluate their offers. I just got a freaking Xbox achievement because I won a bidding war for a 90-plus overall player. We got Derwin James right away, which is great. Unfortunately, I think we actually missed out on Kaiser White. We should have won a little bit more competitive. And James Robinson... Uh, it's not looking particularly hot. Ultimately, I think it's just safe to say that, oh, we actually did get James Robinson. We got James Robinson with the very low bargain deal. Maybe it's because running back's not as valuable of a position, but it can be done. So that's really one stage of free agency. You can do it two more times to fill out your team, but I'm just really ultimately a big, big fan of how free agency works here in Madden 23. I've talked about it before. I kind of relate a little bit to recruiting in NCAA, which was absolutely awesome. So there's a little bit of a throwback there. 
and you know, you know what? A big thing here you might be looking at is like, I'm a bad team. My motivations suck. It's very hard to attract free agents. It's fluid. You're going to be able to improve them as you go through your franchise mode, as you add mentors to your positions, as you land a franchise quarterback, as your team becomes a little bit more of a Super Bowl contender. All those motivations are going to change on your team and will make your team overall a lot more appealing to land these big name free agents to fill out your roster. So. That is free agency. That is franchise mode. That is scouting. I hope you guys are able to take away something from this video that you can apply to your own franchise mode. If there's something that I did not answer that you need some input on, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. As always, if it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys back here on the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace out.